This is Talk Business and Politics with Roby Brock. Welcome to today's Talk Business and Politics. I'm joined by John Brummett, columnist with the Arkansas Democrat Gazette. Good to see you. Good to, good to be here. You're looking a little shaggy there. Yes. You, you're not. I have not pulled the trigger yet on a home remedy. Have you not? No. <laughs> I've, uh, Shayla has offered, and I've thought about it, but. I think that's a good move on your part. Well, something's got to be done. Uh, I started to wear the uh, cap, but I didn't think that would be appropriate. Uh, so let's talk about what has been going on, and let's begin with national politics first. Let's talk about uh, the president has been holding near daily press conferences to talk about how he and his administration are responding uh, to the uh, COVID-19 crisis. And in particular lately, he's been talking about liberating some states, encouraging basically some protesters that are not in favor of some of the harsh lockdowns that are going on. What do you what do you think's at work here? I think it's the same thing that's always at work with Trump. Uh, I don't think he thinks things through beyond his own ego. I, I just don't. I think he lives in this narcissistic shell, and and I think he was mad at the Democratic governors of a few states, and in one of them, the uh, the governor of Michigan. And then you had all these arm, you had these protesters. Uh, uh, from the right wing, some armed at the state capitol saying we wanted to go back Still to Still wearing masks though, mind yeah, you. Some of them, yeah. Uh, and I think, I think in his, I'm gonna say, uh, I have no grand medical basis for saying this, but I think in his personality disorder that we see manifest every day, his narcissistic disorder, uh, he's, he wanted, uh, he felt he could get some advantage uh, uh, and take a, make a political shot at, uh, at, a, at a governor who had offended him by, by maybe criticizing him. And I think that's what it, all this is about. And nothing, I don't think he had any idea. I really don't. And I'm giving him some strange benefit of the doubt here. I don't think he had any idea that he was essentially calling or endorsing armed, liber, uh, armed insurrection against his own policies. I mean, basically, I mean, the social distancing, distancing, these are national guidelines which his administration has advanced. I don't think he thinks that far. And then afterward, the, you realize that people are going, oh my God, he's calling, uh, uh, th this is worse than Charlottesville. This is, a, and people are saying to me, you say we ought to not pay any attention because his words are empty. These aren't empty, and they aren't, because this gives encouragement. Even if he doesn't remotely intend it, he gives encouragement to that kind of behavior, and it's kind of frightful. So that's, I think, I think everything with Trump goes back to this perimeter around his frame, which is his megalomania and his narcissism. And I don't think he thinks through uh, the ramifications of some of his uh, pronouncements, and occasionally they can be truly dangerous. And I think this is such a case. Some have said that this is just him throwing out or creating or helping foment another distraction from it, some have criticized his uh, administration's poor response to this whole pandemic. If you can create something else to, you know, the shiny object, the squirrel to look away to, now you're focused on this problem versus the other problem. I, I think there has to be some degree or element of that as well, don't you? People say so, and, and, and I, you seem to think so, and, and I have heard that. that. And this gives him some credit for tactical, uh, uh, not genius, but uh, tactical skill. I'm going to go out here and call for armed insurrection by saying liberate uh, these people in their states, uh, and this is going to cause. Well, and throw in that your Second Amendment rights are occasionally. Well, a, that was in fraud that here. was in Virginia, and that was right. handy for him. He was able to invoke that. I don't give him credit for the tactical, uh, uh, but uh, others do. Uh, maybe it's some of both, but I think he just. Well, have you noticed how? How every uh, people who criticize him, he always refer, he never can let it go, and he always he often says he's a nasty person. I, I just think he he uses that word a lot. I just think his his disorder is such that he really he really internalizes and overreacts to uh, criticism and says things that he thinks uh, uh, serve uh, are self-serving. Whether he, this is in part or even in most a tactical uh, uh, a matter. Uh, I, I suggest uh, I, that's possible. I, I don't I, think so. I want to get your take on this. When when you've watched, probably I know you have not watched wall to wall coverage of this, but you have I seen. I can't bear it. I, I know, but you have seen some of the press conferences and his interaction with the national press corps that is socially distanced in the room. There, 
you've attended quite a few press conferences in your days. How would you be handling yourself if you got to ask the president a question in that White House briefing room? Would you keep your composure as many of the uh, reporters have done, even when he's singled them out and criticized their questioning or calling them nasty or whatever? Or would you push back in a pretty strong way? I would not push back. No? No. 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 I, I, I just wouldn't. And I think the, I think the media, uh, uh, those reporters hurt themselves when I've had several people say, yeah, Trump's crazy. I mean, that's what they say. But, but those reporters are out of line. I mean, when did we start sassing and talking back to the president? Well, as I put in a column yesterday, about the time uh, we passed the first, we wrote the First Amendment. <laughs> but, but it is on, we, we haven't seen it to this level at the presidential level. And I think it's best to professionally, measuredly, ask your pointed question. Ask a follow-up if it's not asked, but not, in, not take the bait that he's, ta that, that, that he's so prone to taking. Everybody's taking bait up there, and it's just a, it's just a rather regrettable spectacle every afternoon. <laughs> um, the Governor Asa Hutchinson has set forth the date of May 4th as a potential deadline to start reopenings, um, businesses around the state, and to loosen up on some of the restrictions. Is that too soon in your estimation? Not a scientist, not a doctor, not a public health expert. Seems way too soon to me. It just does. Uh, With all of those credentials yeah. that you have? Yeah, I, I mean, there, there's this thing going on today <clears throat> on Twitter, and it's, it's interesting. The, the, the outbreak in, at uh, Cummins, the state prison outbreak, hundreds have tested positive. Nearly all are asymptomatic, and people are saying, we have a control group here. Look at this. This is, uh, and we can follow and we can see. And then you have these people saying, look, I've been telling you, uh, healthy, regular, uh, middle-aged people uh, uh, get this, and they, they have no symptoms, and, and we need to get back out there and, and isolate the other way, the people who are infirm or elderly. This is an example, and, and others are saying, wait a minute, uh, we don't know. I mean, I mean asymptomatic may mean pre-symptomatic. We need to check them in a couple of weeks. And others are saying this may be an asymptomatic strain. Others are saying the prison environment may be different from the walking around in the street environment. So there's this big argument going on, which which is a perfectly fine debate to have, except absent data, clear, relevant data, you don't know. Everybody's, everybody's advancing a theory, and people tend to be more prone to want to get back out there the more desperate they are about the economy and the more desperate they are about social isolation. I understand that. I'm pretty desperate. I mean, I'm ready. Uh, I'd love to be back to, uh, to normal, but it seems like May 4, for any significant relaunching of the economy, that's coming right up. And I don't see, we've tested, what, 0.7% of the state's population? Uh, you know? And maybe the, maybe, maybe the prison outbreak is, is a true microcosm. And maybe if we all got back out there, everybody would get it, but 98, 99% of us would be fine, and many of those would never know it. Maybe. But we need to know more. That said, you are the business guy, and you, there may be some forms of economic relaunching that don't pose a great risk to that uncertainty. I don't know what they are. Uh, I trust that you would know more, and uh, maybe I need to read talkbusiness.net. <laughs> but uh, there may be. It may be, I don't know, mm -hmm. that my barber can see me pretty soon. I don't know. Uh, we both need masks, and can he cut around the earpieces and the ties on the mask? I don't know. Uh, I'm worried about my hair, and that's, a, that's not a real issue. Uh, <laughs> but there may be. So, uh, do, what do you, may I ask you? Sure. Are, are there, are, are there low-risk economic activities that, that, can, that could conceivably safely begin the 4th of May yeah. in Arkansas? Uh, I don't know because I don't think we know what the environment is okay. in May 4th just yet. Right. And, I, I, and I guess I kind of fall into the camp of as much as the governor and his administration talks about that they do have some pretty big samples of testing out there, I just feel like we have a wide swath of the population that we, we don't know if they have it or don't have the it. The only, as I've said a thousand times, the only data that he has that I put any stock in 
really in terms of mattering in the total population is the hospitalization. Mm -hmm. I agree with you on that. It's rising a little, uh, but that still doesn't tell you how many have had it, how many might be walking around with it, and how vulnerable really Okay, what's 1% of 330 million people? That's a lot of people, you know, who, who would have complications and, and, and be uh, in real health peril. So you're sort of taking the hospital and saying, well, it stands to reason that it's not that big a deal in Arkansas. Uh, well, okay, it may stand to reason, but we need some, I don't know if we need universal testing or if we can ever get there, but I've read that you, it may get to the, it is possible that you're going to need a card, if possible. Mm -hmm. I don't mean to be an impressive society that says you don't have it or have had it. You know, maybe. Uh, the governor of California said we're going to open restaurants eventually, not anytime soon. It's going to be fewer tables farther apart, and uh, at, we're going to have a maitre d', and then we're going to have somebody checking your temperature and letting you in. That may be the new norm for Maybe. A while. And how do the restaurants get by with half as many customers? You know? it's. Fascinating. You, uh, you should, and um, maybe you have. There's a, there's some great stuff uh, out there about how this is permanently transformative of our economy. When we come out of it, more people are going to work at home. Fewer people are going to live in the cities. More people are going to do higher education online, which is going to change the whole student debt situation. I mean, I think these are these are real things uh, that 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 the virus is going to change in, in the way we do our economy and our business. I agree with you okay. on that. And there'll right. be a lot of other things as All right. well. All right, in the essence of time here. Okay, let's, I'm sorry uh, I've gone on too No, no, long. no, it's good. It's a good conversation to it, catch up. Essence so. of time, meaning one word answer. Well, no, yes. no, 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 no. no. Okay. I mean, All right. we've been going for a while. Okay. People have attention spans, despite it being your lofty and insightful commentary, well, there still is a limit on, okay. on time. All right. The fiscal session last week, short and sweet. I guess right. they'll sign a die at the end of this next week. But really, the biggest development: Senator Jimmy Hickey of Texarkana uh, bests uh, Senator Bart Hester of Cave Springs for the Senate President uh, pro tem seat. What do you expect? I expect it's a big change in the operation of the Senate. It's a big story inside the dome. It's maybe one of these called so-called inside baseball stories that won't affect uh, uh, anything beyond that. Uh, Hickey's essence, uh, uh, the essence of his candidacy was, I'm a Senate man and, this, uh, and, and we've lost some of the Senate's separation and independence to the governor's office. We've been an extension of the governor's office. He hastens to say I make no personal criticism of the governor's nephew who's been our president pro tem, but the fact is we need to be more distant. Uh, now, that means that, that there's going to be a different leadership regime in the Senate. That means that ACES stuff won't snap through uh, under the iron hand of nephew Jim Hendren as it may have before. But whether in the end it means that he can't pass what he needs to pass or whether this affects anybody's life remains to be seen and I kind of, kind of doubt it. Uh, but it's, it's, to those of us who follow these things, uh, it's big because, because the, Ace is a micromanager. He micromanages all of state government. He micromanages these daily briefings. And he's been micromanaging the legislature, certainly the Senate, uh, through a familial connection, basically. That, in a terms of process, will change mm -hmm. internally. It'll be something for you to write about. Tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow, <laughs> like the, see, the lead tomorrow column. is uh, the state Senate has moved out of the Hendron Hutchinson household if only up the street. <laughs> or maybe down the street, Texarkana. Geography was a factor in this. Hester, by the way, was, was the Hutchison Hendron guy uh, uh, because he's, he's been a team player. Uh, but I'm, I'm overanalyzing it, I guess, talking too much about <laughs> it. But it's, it's, uh, it's, fasc it's a fascinating internal story. It's got the lobbyists and the senators talking. Always good to visit with you, John Brummett of the Arkansas Democrat and Gazette. Thanks. All right, buddy. All right, that's all for today's program. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Roby Brock. We'll see you next time. You'll find us at the end of a lot of long country roads, covering over 60% of the great state of Arkansas. 
Our 17 electric distribution cooperatives are working day and night to provide reliable, affordable power to over half a million homes, farms, and businesses just like yours. The Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas, your local energy partners. Each day, the promise of our nation begins again. Arkansas and America moving forward. I help make that promise a reality. It's not for everyone, but people everywhere depend on us. Oh, I love you too, Trucking delivers or everything stops. And that's what drives me.